Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this is the new Oppo Find X2 Pro. It's their flagship phone for 2020, and there's a lot new here. With a refreshed design, cutting edge specs, a stunning quad HD and 120Hz screen, dual 5G support, super duper fast charging, and a triple lens camera setup using brand new sensors, which I'm actually really excited about. So I've been lucky enough to get an early hands-on with the Find X2 Pro, but that does mean that right now as I'm filming this, I don't have final pricing and availability but I will pin a comment and update the description below when I know for sure. But first impressions, this is an incredible phone and actually coming straight from uh, playing with and using the Galaxy S20 Ultra, I have to say that in some ways, I actually prefer the X2 Pro. Just quickly guys, make sure to hit that little subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on my next video. And why not follow me on Instagram at the tech chap for more techie goodness. So one year ago, I reviewed the Find X, which at the time had the smallest bezel on any phone thanks to the nifty pop-out camera but they've done away with that here. And instead we have a small hole punch camera in the corner and around the back, we get a new triple camera setup. So I don't think the Find X2 stands out quite as much as the first one, but it's still a gorgeous looking phone with super thin bezels, curved edges, or what they're calling 2.5D curves, as well as a thin aluminum frame between the Gorilla Glass 6 on the front and back. And actually on the back, it is quite hard to see, but you can feel the slightly textured glass. Elsewhere, we get stereo speakers, USB-C charging that supports Oppo's crazy fast 65 watt Super VOOC 2 charging. So while I was a fan of the little pop-out mechanical camera we had on the original Find X, the benefit of this more simple, less mechanical design is we get IP68 water and dust resistance. So you can take this in the pool or the bath with you in up to 1.5 meters of water for up to half an hour. So this is a lot more durable. Side by side with the iPhone 11 Pro Max and the Galaxy S20 Ultra, the Find X2 Pro feels kind of like the Goldilocks size. And while it is very slippery to hold, so I definitely put a case or a pop sock on this, I think it's just the right size and a little bit more manageable than the huge S20 Ultra. Although with that camera bump, it is the same thickness at 8.8 millimeters. And actually, if you use the phone on a flat surface, it does wobble quite a bit, which I guess is another reason to get a case. But I think for me, it's the screen that's the real standout here we get a 6.7 inch Quad HD AMOLED screen, and that seems to be the new standard for 2020 flagship phones, a 120 hertz refresh rate. And the best part is we can have both at the same time. In the display settings, you can jump between vivid, sRGB, or cinematic modes. And with 10-bit color, HDR10+, and 100% DCI-P3 color support, plus that Quad HD res and 120Hz, the screen on this thing is just insane. I could watch movies and Netflix shows all day long on this thing, although I should probably finish the video first. Specs-wise, this ticks all the boxes, really, with a Snapdragon 865, 12 gigs of RAM, and a whopping 512 gigs of SSD storage, although there isn't any microSD support. The only thing that slightly concerns me is battery size. In here we get a 4260 mAh cell, which is still reasonably big, but if you consider the similarly sized S20 Plus has a 4500 mAh cell, and the fact that when you pair that Quad HD res with the higher 120Hz refresh rate, maybe you're using 5G as well at the same time. Again, this is one of the areas I'm gonna have to test properly in my full review, so make sure you do subscribe and stay tuned for that. But of all the specs, uh, on paper at least, I guess the battery life, because actually it's split into two cells uh, and then paired together, is probably my biggest concern on the Find X2 Pro. So the Find X2 runs Android 10 with Oppo's own Color OS 7.1 software on top. And while in the past I haven't been the biggest fan of their skin, it's actually lovely to use. It's fast, there's tons of options, including being able to create your own custom icon styles. And as well as the awesome gesture support we get with Android 10, I like the extra option of holding a swipe in from the edge to jump back to a previous app. We also get a Smart Assistant page to the left of the home screen, although it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot you can add to it other than usual weather, step tracking, and app shortcuts. And then we also have an edge panel that you can swipe in with a handful of apps and shortcuts that you can customize. Now for unlocking the phone, we get an optical fingerprint reader as well as face unlock. They both work well, although there's no IR sensor on the front, so face unlocking isn't quite as reliable in lower light. All right, so I've saved the best till last. Let's talk about that camera. It's a triple lens setup with a 48 megapixel main lens, 48 megapixel telephoto or technically periscope lens, and a 13 megapixel ultra wide. There's no time of flight depth sensor here though, like we get on the S20 Ultra, nor do we get an option for 8K video recording. Although in practice, I don't know how many people would actually shoot in 8K. What's really interesting though, is the new sensors the Find X2 uses, with Sony's brand new IMX689 for the 48 megapixel main lens which also uses pixel binning to combine four pixels into one, so we end up with a higher quality 12 megapixel photo. 
You can choose to shoot in the full 48 megapixels if you want though. Now to get even more technical for just a second, this is the first phone to use what's called all pixel omnidirectional face detect autofocus. So that's just some fancy jargon for better focusing, but altogether it's a very impressive camera and photos look great. And if you're more of a vivid rather than a natural kind of person, then you've got the AI dazzle mode, which makes everything look more punchy and vibrant. Oppo's also added a new Ultra Night Mode 3.0. You can probably guess what that does. And so in low light, with a longer exposure, photos look good. Side by side with the S20 Ultra then, how do you think the Find X2 Pro holds up? Which one do you prefer? Vote in the poll at the top right and let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a full camera comparison. Now speaking of video, this tops out at 4K 60 rather than 8K on the S20, but it's sharp, stable, and looks good. Plus we get a new ultra steady mode, similar to Samsung's Super Steady. Although like that one, this also drops the res down to 1080p for that. And finally up front, we have a 32 megapixel f2.4 selfie camera. I always turn off the AI enhancement stuff that's on by default, but the HDR does a good job of evening out the lighting and I like how wide the angle is. So far then, I'm actually really impressed by the Oppo Find X2 Pro, and I think Oppo's got a good opportunity along with, say, OnePlus and Xiaomi and others, that while Huawei's struggling a little bit, particularly in Western markets, that maybe they can grow their brand recognition a little bit. So hopefully with devices this good, it'll help put their name on the map a little bit more. So the Find X2 Pro is definitely worth considering. It's got a lot going for it, but I think its biggest challenge will be standing out from the S20+, Plus, OnePlus 8, and so on. But stay tuned for my full longer term review soon. But what do you think of the X2? Would you buy one? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're not already sick of my voice, then why not hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on my next video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.